Hello everyone. I hope the previous video has successfully enabled you to install Hortonworks uh, Sandbox. So just to carry on from the point where we left, this is my running currently running Sandbox and it looks something like this. Now instead of working over this Sandbox screen, which is quite smaller uh, in comparison to the full screen mode, I use a client called Putty in order to connect to the virtual machine that uh, you know I have started just few moments ago. So you, if you are interested, you can download this Putty. Uh, you can just go to Google and you can do Putty download. Putty download. It will take you to the download page, and it's a standard you know Windows installation. It will hardly take a minute to you know. Uh, get you started so let's start over here so what are we going to do today so in this tutorial we are going to perform uh, one of the objective rather the first objective uh, in data ingestion category of Hortonworks you know data platform uh, certification uh, that is called as HDPCD certification so we are going to perform scoop import operation we are going to perform the scoop import operation and for the blog post related to this video you can visit my blog that is melinjagre.wordpress.com and you will be able to see this post called post 3 hdpcd scoop import so whatever the tasks that we are going to perform in this video are documented in this post uh, so anyway, I, I am going to post the link in the uh, comment section. So it will not be a difficult part to, you know, find this tutorial on my blog. So let's get started. For performing scoop import operation, we must have some data in our uh, MySQL database because scoop is used for import and export of data between RDBMS and HDFS. So the first thing that I am going to do now is to uh, populate the MySQL, uh, you know, database with the required tables or the required data. So for doing that, I am going to use this retail underscore db dot SQL file, which is provided by Cloudera. So what I have done is, uh, since I was not able to find it on the Cloudera website, I copied the content of that file and I, you know, created a new file in my GitHub profile. So you can also use this uh, link in order to download this retail underscore db dot SQL file. So the first thing that I am going to do is I am going to copy this and I will download this file. So remember the location where we are currently at. We are in slash home slash Horton. So I'm just going to paste it and I'm going to press enter. So it will go to the website and um, it will download the file. As you can see, the name of the file is retail underscore db dot SQL dot two. This is because uh, there already exists retail underscore db dot SQL. So instead of overwriting the already present file, uh, it rename the newly created file so you can just uh, do head let's say first hundred lines of this file you can see there are a lot of contents so if i open it in okay, bi editor that will be that will make more sense as you can see it's doing all sort of sql stuff creating table dropping the existing table and then um, uh, populating the same table with some data right so let me just get out of it so now uh, we will try to load this retail underscore db dot sql in the mysql database for that just log into mysql and then on my blog i have given the set of commands so we just have to blindly run those commands so basically it will it is going to create the database and it will create a separate uh, user also for that so as you can see it, it this command is going to create retail underscore dba user 
whose password will be Hadoop. So I'm going to copy and paste this here. So while pasting, just remember this uh, single quotes, they might get converted to some other character because of which you might get some error. So here we are facing one problem that is create user failed for retail underscore DBA. This is because retail underscore DB already exists. So this uh, command is bound to fail. So we will just ignore that error and keep on running the next commands. Remember, if you are running this command for the first time, then you won't get an error. But since uh, my retail underscore DB already exists, I'm getting that error. So there is no point of uh, you know getting worried over here this grant command is going to grant all the permission to retail underscore dba user on retail underscore db database okay then i'm going to flush the privileges just clear the screen and uh, then our actual data loading operation starts so i use the retail underscore db just for confirmation, I am showing how many tables currently exist in retail underscore DB data, database. So as you can see, there are no tables currently present in retail underscore DB database. Okay. So now this is the most important command, source command. So I pasted it. So what is going to happen? This source command is going to load this file. Uh, SQL file in MySQL and it is going to run each and every line present in that file. So after copy pasting, I am just going to press enter. So as you can see, it's giving lot of output, a lot of stuff. So just wait for a moment till it get finished. And once it finishes, yeah, so it is finished. Let's clear the screen and I am going to run show tables one more time. So see, as you can see, there are six new tables created just now. And if you want to see whether data got loaded successfully or not, I'm just going to see top 10 records for the categories table. So data also got loaded. So as you can see, for populating these six table, or rather creating these six tables then populating the records in those table it took hardly a minute right so i will recommend you to follow the same approach download the sql file and then load it in your mysql table right so this completes the mysql load so let me just exit out of mysql window now the next part is actual running the scoop command right so scoop import means data will be transferred from your MySQL table to HDFS location, right? So for that, I am going to run this uh, command that is present in my GitHub profile. So if you want to visit my GitHub profile, you can just click over here, view raw, and it will take you to the, the raw version of the file. So I'm just going to copy this. I will press back to go to the previous tab and I am going to paste the content over here okay so before actually running the command let me just go through it quite briefly so at scoop the first line scoop import it indicates it's the import operation now why I have given backslash over here is whenever you Whenever you give backslash after a command, uh, it indicates to the Linux file system or it indicates to the processor that the command has not exited now. So the command is still continued on the next line as well. So there are two ways in which you can run this command. The first being that I, the first one that I have already shown like this. And the second one is you can remove this backslash and you can keep it in one single line right so this way it looks better that's why i have used it there is no other uh, you know uh, reason behind the way i am executing the command hyphen hyphen connect operation is going to 
tell scoop where my MySQL database is stored. So as you can see, JDBC colon MySQL colon slash slash. These are the standard things. This might get changed based on your RDBMS flavor. I have our MySQL. That's why I have given it over here. If you have Oracle or PostGRE SQL or any other RDBMS database, you can put that keyword over here and execute the same command. Then here it comes the host name on which the MySQL database is installed. So this can be any host name, remote host name as well. This is the port on which MySQL is installed, which is default 3306. After that, after this slash forward slash, you have to pass the database name, right? So which is retail underscore DB again backslash to indicate that it's a continuous command. Hyphen hyphen username should be followed by the username. Hyphen hyphen password should be followed by the password. Hyphen hyphen table should be followed by the table name which you want to import into HDFS. So, hyphen M indicates the number of mapper tasks that you want to run for this scoop import operation. Here I have given it to be equal to six. If you don't pass it, then by default, four mapper tasks are run for a particular scoop import operation. So now let us just go ahead and press the enter key and it will start running the scoop import operation based on the RAM that you have given for your virtual machine and, and the network parameters. It will take some time to execute the command. So let us wait till the command gets executed successfully. So the scoop import operation, uh, you know, got over successfully and we can see the last two lines which indicate the successful scoop import operation. As you can see showing that 1 KB, roughly the data was 1 KB was uh, transferred in 134 seconds and there are total 58 number of records, right? Uh, so let us see whether HDFS received 58 records or not. So for that, I'll go to HDFS uh, user root. Now this is the default directory in which uh, the exported output will get stored. Uh, it, it follows the syntax like slash user slash username since root is the username that we are using. So it will be this directory that will contain the that will contain one more directory with the name equal to the name of the table. Now the table name that we uh, imported just now is categories. So our output should be in user root categories table. So as you can see, it contains seven files or seven items out of which six are the files called as part files as you can see part hyphen m hyphen 0 0 0 1 2 3 4 5 now why these six files have been created like that because the number of map tasks that we passed while performing the scoop import operation was equal to six as you can see over here so it successfully created six files with some data present in each and every file from the data from the size of the file you can say and this extra file that got created successfully is an indicator of that the operation that we performed just now is a successful operation and it imported all the records that uh, you know you were expecting. So let us check whether it imported 58 records or not. So I am just going to run this command degrees slash asterisk and then word count number of lines. So this should come equal to 58. So as you can see, the total number of records that, that got imported successfully is 58. So that means uh, there is no issue with the number of records. So just have a look at one of the records, how it looks, and then we will be able to conclude this video tutorial. So as you can see, we were expecting three columns and we got three columns. Uh, so these two tests are enough to, uh, you know, conclude that our scoop import operation ran successfully. 
and this is the way how it should be performed so in conclusion i would like to say the things that you should be looking at your mysql should have enough permission it should have it should have data that you want to import and the directory that you are or the directory to which you are directly importing the data shouldn't exist automatically um if these three things are you know satisfied then you won't be able, you won't face any issue while performing the scoop import operation so i hope you like this video uh, there is lot of stuff that is going to come we are going to see all the objectives that are present in the hdpcd certification series so please subscribe to my channel and for next part of the tutorials you can visit my blog and follow my blog as well in the next tutorial we are going to see how to import data by running a custom query instead of importing the entire table right so stay tuned and see you soon bye bye